from LEX 18, your official UK sports station for Big Blue Nation, this is BBN Tonight, presented by Central Bank, the official bank of UK athletics. Good evening and welcome to BBN Tonight. I'm Keith Farmer. And I'm Anna Trullo. Tonight we're talking about an alliance forming. Dwight Truth, anyone? <laughs> and other changes coming to college football, plus a conversation with the Big Blue Walls, Luke Fortner. And you can't talk about the Big Blue Wall without thinking of the late John Schlarman. Kentucky football has unveiled the latest way that they're honoring Coach Schlarman, and it's just right outside of the stadium. That's tonight's Big Blue Story, presented by Baptist Health. This banner was hung today. It includes one of Coach Slarman's signature lines. You come together, nobody can stop you. Truly words that he lived by and a mindset he instilled in his offensive line room and throughout the program. The poster replaces the Josh Allen banner on the side of Kroger Field facing the Nutter training facility. I talked with Leanne Schlarman and Mark Stoops right after they saw it for the very first time. We didn't know what we were coming here for. We just knew that there was something special going on and they wanted to keep it special for us so it's been pretty quiet and um, we didn't really know. It's been exciting and nervous at the same time when getting to know what we're, was going to happen to see John. It's amazing. It's really nice. It really shows the impact that he had on everybody. It's something special, just one way we could recognize John. We're still searching for more ways to honor him and represent him. Of course, we've done things for the family, but for Leanne and the boys to come out here and see him and see him on the wall, uh, and for all of us, it's inspirational and uh, it does put a smile on our face. It's been a difficult time, and uh, this is one way to, to recognize John and, and hopefully Leanne and the family like it. Oh, it's awesome. We just, we, it's great to see John up there. I know he would be proud and embarrassed and see himself up there, but um, it'll be fun to come to games and be able to see him up there and he'll be up there for a year, so it'll be great. I saw them hanging the poster in person this morning and Anna, it is huge. You won't be able to miss it on game days this fall and you kind of heard Coach Stoops talking there, but this is just the first, this isn't the last thing, the only way that they're honoring Coach Stoops. So this is just the beginning of that. Good, he deserves so much and yeah. it should be huge. That's yes. the kind of impact he had exactly. on the program. Meanwhile, in the SEC, LSU has announced it will require all Tiger Stadium guests age 12 and older to provide proof of vaccination or a negative COVID-19 test taken within 72 hours of entry into the stadium. The LSU president said, quote, we must take all reasonable measures to protect our campus and community, not only on game days, but long after guests have left Tiger Stadium, end quote. LSU is the first SEC school to finalize a requirement like this. And as Georgia Bulldogs, on the other hand, are reportedly planning on having no COVID mandates and returning to 100% normal fan experience at Sanford Stadium this fall. Now we checked with UK today and as of now the, univer the university is still in the process of finalizing its plan for game days this fall and of course we'll keep you updated as those plans continue to develop. Now Keith, it's time to talk about the Alliance. <laughs> it just sounds a little bit spooky, doesn't it? Yeah, it does a lot. <laughs> it's the new partnership between the ACC, the Big Ten and the Pac-12. Those three conferences announced today they're officially joining forces <laughs> to try and feel as powerful as the SEC, especially when it comes to college football. Really, the alliance will allow the conferences to work together on playoff expansion decisions and other big issues that come up in the sport, and the leagues want to emphasize their, quote, common values. Now, keep in mind, this is all about the future. It's not expected to directly impact college football this year or even in the next couple of years, especially since games are scheduled so many years in advance and TV contracts are worth so much money. And Big Ten Commissioner Kevin Warren said that this alliance will not interfere with any existing contracts and the leagues have opted to not sign any formal contract for the alliance. So. Hard to say how much this is actually worth to them or if it's just posturing after the SEC added Texas and Oklahoma. Yeah, super interesting. I don't yeah. know about all that. It's, yeah, sounds like a lot of talk yeah. and not much action. Not much right? action. All right, now a little bit of football talk. Uh, we made it as long as we could, but come on, first game in 11 days, right? That's right. And we'll be saying these two names a lot until then. Darian Kennard and Chris Rodriguez. This time it's because they've been added to the pro football focus all-America team. Canard on the first team, C-Rod as an honorable mention. 
Now, Pro Football Focus is a little late to the name Darian Kennard an All-American party. He's already been on every other major list that's come out. Kennard is first team All-American on USA Today, Walter Camp, and Athlon Sports, and I believe ESPN, mm. and second team with the Associated Press and Phil Steele's team. So certainly some big expectations for Darian this season. But Keith, I think he can handle them. Uh, yeah, I, I think he can too. I think he expects them, and yeah. I think he cherishes it, and I think he wants to prove it. Exactly. He wants He's to, ready. to show that he deserves those honors. All right, now to some former Cats, and Landon Young has had an impressive preseason so far for the New Orleans Saints. So much so that Pro Football Focus has graded him as the second best rookie tackle behind Samuel Cosme of the Washington football team. Landon looks like he's a lock for a roster spot this season and might be earning his way into some playing time. Also in NFL news, less fun this time. Drake Jackson is looking for a new home after being released by the Houston Texans. The Texans had several centers on their roster, so hopefully Drake can land uh, somewhere with the need with a need at the position. When the Texans did claim him, there were multiple teams that put in claims, so hopefully that interest still remains. Hey, the UK women's soccer team has started off the season the right way at home. Junior Jordan Rhodes had her second career hat trick as Kentucky beat Marshall three to nothing at the Bell this past weekend. Rhodes' first three goal game came last year in the SEC tournament against Florida. She led the SEC in points last season and is well on her way to doing that again. Listen up, next home game is this Thursday at seven o'clock against the University of Louisiana Lafayette, so you want to get out there for that and support them. Kentucky men's soccer was voted to finish third in Conference USA after a strong finish last season. They fall behind Charlotte in reigning national champs Marshall, who receives all nine first place votes. Marcel Meinzer was all first team all conference last season, and he made the preseason all conference team this year, as well as Robert Screen, who was second team last year. The Cats have an early season opportunity to move up, though. Kentucky opens the season against number 25, Coastal Carolina, this Thursday night at CCU. Coming up next on BBN tonight, time for our Big Blue Wall talk with Luke Fortner. He's been around the block a time or two for the Wildcats, so he has all the insight you need on how this year's offensive line is shaping up. We'll be right back.